Hi, yes. Hi, Phil Amato. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks so much for accepting our invitation to talk to us about the coronavirus. You're welcome. Did you happen to get a few questions that Pascal maybe uh, forwarded to either you or other folks at Baptist about what we're going to be talking about today? I did. Oh, good. Are you, are you uh, comfortable with most or all of them? So there's some questions that are more pertaining to kids. I do adult medicine. Okay. Um, so I really wouldn't be able to give much information on that. Um, about the, the question about the uh, multi-system inflammatory syndrome, the one that they wrote as the mystery illness. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't I don't deal with children, so I'm not seeing any of them. So most of my information would just be, you know, what the CDC put out and, sure. you know, which is... Well, why don't we go ahead and skip that? Because I believe we're talking to another doctor tomorrow morning about that. So that'd be probably a separate story uh, for tomorrow afternoon anyway. So I'll just uh, stick with the with the other questions. How's that? Okay. Okay, great. How long you been at Baptist now? I've been here since 2014. Really? And you uh, practice internal medicine? Yes. Great. I can hear you, but I can't see you yet. So you probably can't see me yet either. I see an action news. Oh, I guess they're working on the shot right now. Oh, I see you now. Okay. I don't know if you could see okay. me. I know. I just see myself. Okay. Are, will Christina be able to see me or just... Uh, I've never done a... Oh, okay. They're setting it up. I've never done a Zoom. Okay. I've done a Skype before. Have you done Zoom before? No, I've done WebEx before. Oh, okay. But that's also just audio. I haven't done a video one. Oh, really? Okay. Well, apparently with Zoom, you could have like tons of people all kind of like the Brady Bunch in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as we get started, I'll just, I'm just going to kind of roll this kind of like we're live. So, um, okay. Rob, can you this is pro and get the boxes ready and all that? This is live on tape. Yeah, this is not live. Hey, Dr. No. Mathai, okay. can you hear me? My name's Ian. Uh, I'm in the control room here. Are you using okay, hi. Are you using Zoom on a phone right now? I am. Could you turn your phone sideways, please? Thank, oh. thank you very much. That's much better. Oh, there you go. Should, appreciate should I that. move this backwards? Um, a little more to your right a little bit, so you're a little more centered up. Oh, all right, that's perfect. That is perfect there. Um, okay. We'll get started in just a moment. You'll hear uh, Phil introduce you, and then uh, we'll get right to it. Like he said, uh, we're just doing a recording to tape. Okay. All right, thank you. I, I don't see anybody else yet. Oh, there. Do you see me now? Yes. Can you see me now? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Do you know uh, a Dr. Anthony Capasso? I do not. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's my brother-in-law. I thought maybe, uh, I think he worked at Baptist, but it was a long time ago. He has his own practice in Ponte Vedra now. He's an internal uh, medicine doctor as well. So. Oh, outpatient. Okay. I work yeah. on the inpatient side. Oh, okay. So, so I pretty much just know whoever's in the hospital downtown. Strictly at the hospital. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, okay. All right. I can, I have a echo here. What is that? Okay. We're good. All right. Doctor, you good? Yes. Okay, good. With us now to talk about the coronavirus is Dr. Christina Mathai from Baptist Health. Dr. Mathai, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Dr. Mathai, some new research shows coronavirus can travel as far as 18 feet after a person coughs, sneezes, or even speaks, but there's still a question on how long that virus can survive while airborne, right? Mm -hmm. So right now we don't know the exact specifics on how long it can live in the air. The CDC has recommended at least six feet for social distancing. Um, and then, of course, they've recommended wearing the mask when you're out and about. So that mask, very important to use, obviously. Yes. Yeah. President Trump says he's taking hydroxychloroquine, and a woman at your hospital there at Baptist who was sick with the virus for 40 days got the drug and said she was better within days by taking it. But people still have to be aware that the FDA has not approved this for the virus. So 
as with everything with COVID, it is changing day by day. So we're still looking at medications and different routes of therapy. With all medications, we look at patients and do a case by case you know, evaluation of their whole medical history to see if a particular medication will work for them. All medications have side effects. And so hydroxychloroquine is not a Band-Aid or a blanket medication that we give everybody. And so it is a conversation with the doctor and the patient taking into account their clinical situation and then seeing if it's a right fit for them. I believe some people with heart issues too should not be taking this? Exactly. It, it is known to cause arrhythmias in particular patients. And so we do have to monitor with EKGs, we've especially been, before initiating this medication. We've been hearing reports that some people could get the coronavirus a second time. What's the likelihood of that? And can those reinfected folks transmit the virus to other people? We have heard reports from other countries that they have seen patients with reinfection. Um, it's not clear what or who gets these many get, gets reinfected. Um, if you are reinfected, I would assume that you would be able to pass it on again because it is a reinfection. There's something about uh, dead cells apparently that's uh, in the body where possibly the reinfection rate is pretty low because those cells apparently are coronavirus cells are not alive. I would not know the specifics on that because they are still looking into if people are getting reinfected, how they're getting reinfected, and and if they can transmit it at that point. Yeah. We had some big news yesterday about the drug company Moderna saying that phase one of a vaccine it was testing went well with some eight people, I guess, developing antibodies. But now we're also learning the data is leaving some big questions in this. So with all vaccines, they have to go through clinical trials. There's different phases in the trials. Um, and especially with coronavirus, which we don't know much about, it is gonna take time for a real vaccine to roll out. It more likely we won't see a vaccine available until the 2021, 2022 season. So a, a lot of people were hoping for a vaccine by the end of the year. You're saying that generally that possibly not will not happen? That might be, I guess, too, um, it may be too early to know at that point if we can have a vaccine that quickly. Yeah. I know you uh, generally treat adults and not children, but uh, schools are going back possibly in the fall. Kids maybe even wearing masks in some cases. Um, what do school districts you think have to do to be prepared in all this to make sure the disease is not passed on the virus from not only kids to kids, but kids to adults and staff members in schools? So I think that when we're closer to schools opening, the school board, the state will be following CDC guidelines at that point. And if we are still continuing to uh, recommend that children over the age of two wear masks, then it's a very real possibility that they may have to wear masks to school, both children and teachers. And I would assume that they would continue to do hygiene and cleaning of the desk and chairs to mitigate that risk of transmission. We got uh, gyms now partially open. We have restaurants at 50% uh capacity right now for allowing people in the social distancing of tables and the six feet in these businesses. But as you as a doctor and seeing, uh, you know, knowing more about the coronavirus possibly and how it could affect people and how it's transmitted, would you go into a restaurant right now and have lunch or dinner or into a gym and work out? Uh, I would definitely try to avoid things that don't really need to be done. And so if you if you could take out food or if you could eat outside, that would definitely be better than eating indoors. Um, if you could eat at home, that would be the best. And, and how about coronavirus patients at your hospital over at Baptist Health? When was the peak there? And then how many patients approximately do you have now in the hospital? Uh, so we were pretty lucky here in Jacksonville. We had, I wouldn't say if it was a peak, but our, I don't you know, our highest numbers within the downtown campus may have been about 
15 at one point, um, including our ICU patients. And so we have been pretty successful here in keeping the numbers relatively low. Currently, we're at the downtown campus, less than 10 patients. Are any of those 10 patients in the ICU? Not that I am well aware of. Okay. So they are on the road to recovery, it looks like. Yes. Okay, some very, very good information. Anything else that uh, you'd like to add that maybe I missed about, um, you know, here, especially here in Jacksonville and how folks are, are dealing with the coronavirus? I think just a reminder as people are excited to go out and about, going to the beach and going to restaurants, just keep in mind the CDC recommendations for social distancing, um, you know, keeping the group small, keeping the masks on when you're out and about, going to grocery stores, et cetera. All right, Dr. Mathai, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Hopefully we'll be able to see you again soon. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I don't think I... Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you, doctor. Yes, go ahead. Oh, okay. The, I think the answer, there was a question you asked me about, maybe likelihood of reinfection that I kind of was like all over the place. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We might leave that out. What I was hearing, okay. um, and this is just on news broadcasts, is apparently when a person might be tested after they had coronavirus, a test may come up saying that they have the virus again, but the test might be showing some dead coronavirus cells that they yes, may have in their yes. system so, and stuff. So we have a lot of, I guess, bacterial illnesses that can do that, so that you can remain positive for quite some time, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are reinfected or, um, or continuing to shed is what I should say. So it's, it's hard to say. And I, don't have access to whatever they're seeing in Korea and in these countries that are reporting this. And so I don't know, are these really true reinfections? Are they just people remaining positive? Is it a different strain that is getting tested and being positive? It's hard to know. Okay, good points. Yeah, I'll um, go ahead and uh, include that because I thought that was fascinating. You would think they would develop a test though to see, okay, are, is this an active, you know, cell of coronavirus or is it a shedding cell, but I guess they're still working on that. I think it's just hard to kind of come up with these tests Yeah, I since everything imagine. is changing every day. Right, since, um, they, since they have a hundred of them out there now, right? Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right, a hundred companies working on it. Well, great. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Mathai. Appreciate it once again. Have a great day, okay? You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.